Psalm chapter 90. <clears throat> A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Oh, so here's a psalm from Moses. And this psalm is focused, or main attention is to the anger of God. And there is somebody who knows about the anger of God, it's Moses. But Moses was first called by God by the burning bush. Well, God, I can't do it. I can't speak elegant. And God got to the point, listen, who made man's mouth? Then Moses saw the plagues and the wonders upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians in Egypt and their gods. Then this, shall we just say, the wilderness journey, the anger of God, that there were times that Moses would have to intercede for the anger that God was just ready to wipe them out. And there were times that Moses got angry. And then when God got angry at Moses for smiting the rock twice, and not be able to go in the promised land. So, I think Moses knows well about the anger of God. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place for in all generations. And I thought there was a, I thought there was a promised land. See, it was more than just a physical piece of land. It was a land that God told Moses, it's, it's a land filled with milk and honey. There's a place there I'm going to choose, which would be Jerusalem. I'm going to dwell there with the children of Israel. If they were to do what I told them to do, which they cannot, because they're all sinners. Can you imagine from day one if Israel had obeyed God all the way? When they came to Carnish Car Car Barnea. And when the spies came back and said, hey, you know what? The land's wonderful. We got the power of God. Let's go. There would have been no 40 years of wilderness journey. Before the mountains were brought forth. And we've seen this, the mountains brought forth in the last couple chapters. And ever thou hast formed the earth and the world. Now, Moses wrote that in Genesis chapter 1 when he's on Mount Sinai at 40 days and 40 nights. Moses, a man that's been educated, according to Hebrews, with the knowledge and wisdom of the Egyptians, says God created the heavens and earth. We saw that with a wise man just under Solomon the other night. God created it all. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction. That's, that's an eyewitness account of Moses. I don't know at what point he's writing this psalm, but man, he's seen in his lifetime, he's seen the earth open up and a whole family get swallowed up. You've seen fire come down from heaven. He's seen fiery serpents. And why? And say, if God saith, return ye children of men. God brings judgment for man to repent and get right with God. Judgment is it's chastisement. It's, you know, this is what you've done wrong. And it's proper. I want you to do right. It becomes damnation and condemnation when you don't do right and you don't repent. Return ye children of men. Repent. The earth swallowed up. In the next chapter we read, and they got angry with Moses for, for killing all... How did Moses open the earth? That was not to be the response. When they cross the Red Sea and their enemies are, are drowned in the Red Sea, they sing the song of Moses, okay. At that point in time, should never, oh Lord, we don't have enough water. Oh Lord, we don't have enough food. 
God, if you can, if you are able to do what you did to Israel, I mean, to Egypt, and if you're able to do to our enemies what you just did to Red Sea, let's go. But men are sinners. For a thousand years in thy sight are but yesterday when it is past. See how patient God is? Time is nothing to him. It's for us as a watch in the night. And that doesn't mean the wristwatch we have. That's a man who's on sentry duty. And I zoom into Moses that, you know, it, it goes by quick. You know, you're not watching the sun. Not much happening. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. Man. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. Man's life. And Jesus said in Matthew, your, your life is just as grass. Comes up, and even it's cut down in the morning. It flourishes and grows up. And the evening is cut down and withered. That's Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter, find it here. Matthew chapter. Matthew chapter 6 verse 30 Wherefore if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven shall he not much more clothe you a little faith? Quote from Moses one of their big ringleaders Our life is, and we're going to see in a moment how what our life is. For we are consumed by thy anger, death, and by thy wrath we are troubled. That's the story of Moses with the children of Israel. There is a thing of God's anger that will cause your death. That's, I mean, the wages of sin is death, but your sin caused your death to be early. This is a man that watched millions of God's people die. This is a man that before he were to die at the at the at the brim at the at the at the, at the, the line of Israel, he's seen a whole entire generation, but Caleb. And Joshua died. He watched his own sister die. He watched Aaron die. His family. Listen, when um, give me the name now. The ones that carried the ark. They had the special. When when the earth swallowed them up. When the earth swallowed them up. You realize that was their family? Korah. That was Moses and Aaron's family. When the Levites caused trouble. And I know there's one time the Levites, they took up a stand. They grabbed the sword when they were committing uh, fornication. But many of the Levites died also. That was family. Thou has set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Listen. 
You may not know, but God knows. Now, later on, Joshua's going to go in, and Achan, taking the Babylonian garment and the wedge of gold, nobody knew. And when God said that there's the accursed thing in the camp, Joshua had no idea. And when he calls out the tribes and Achan is standing there all by himself, Joshua says, will you tell me? Because Joshua didn't know. Until Achan confessed, but it was too late. Our sins stand in the presence of God. And at that moment, you realize that's when you become accountable. A child, three, four, five, maybe six years old, doesn't realize that they've sinned against God. They're not accountable. But when man is told that you have sinned against a holy and righteous God, as Moses countless told them over and over and over, and they knew they sinned against God because they heard God's voice. They seen the cloud. They seen the fire. They've seen the tabernacle. Yet they still sin. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. They would not repent. They would not get right. We spent our years as a tale that is told. Or just a story. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Joshua, Judge, just a story. No real value. That rich man in hell that Jesus told. Well, what is that rich man that he's a story? That's it. What's his name? I don't know. Where did he live? I don't know. What's he have to do? What did he do to be rich? I don't know. You have a wife and kids? I don't know. What's his story? He's in torment. And tormented forever. His whole entire life, wherever it is, how old he was. What is his entire life but the wrath of God on him? He's in hell burning today. And he could have been the great inventor of penicillin of his time. He may have came up with the greatest invention of his time. Who knows? Who cares? He sinned against God. He died for the wages of sin. He didn't do right. And he's in hell burning. As many of the Israelites who traveled that journey with Moses, behind Moses and Aaron, many of them died seeing God, watching God as a testimony of God. And they died. What's their life? They died. And Paul writes to us, I believe in the book of Corinthians. They were to our example. Our example what? Not to sin. What else? There is nothing else. The Old Testament is written for our admonition. People, oh, I don't read the Old Testament. You're a fool. You know, you don't read in the New Testament. Show me somewhere in the New Testament where the ills of having two or three or four wives. That's found in the Old Testament. The troubles that they had with their children and their wives for multiple wives. You won't find that in the New Testament. In the New Testament, if you sin against God with adultery and murder, just plead the blood. If I confess my sins, adultery and murder, he's faithful and just to forgive my sins and cleanse me from all righteousness. Where do you find the extreme penalty of God for adultery and murder? In the Old Testament. The law says you kill him. And the law said for those that for David and Solomon, you went to hell. What is the what is the, the, the downfall of a church having multiple idols and, and all the nonsense that they have? It's in the Old Testament. You can't under this, understand the New Testament without the Old Testament. Why is Jesus Christ called the Lamb of God? The Old Testament tells you. Why was Jesus Christ died on Passover night? The Old Testament tells you. And there's that tale. What's the tale of the Old Testament? 
how not to do and how what to do. Paul, <coughs> excuse me. Paul said, I would not learn lust except for, except for coveting. What's coveting? You gotta go to the Old Testament. The days of our years are three score, three times 20, 60 years and 10, 70. Moses said that that's a life expectancy. Do you get to 70 years old? You've lived a full life. And if by reason of strength, the previous psalm writer said the strength of God, they before score four times 20, 80 years. Yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow? Moses, all right, 70 years if you live 80. You know what your life is going to be, Moses? You know what entire Moses' life was? Sorrow. Trouble. God manifested in the flesh, and what was his life? Trial, sorrow, upset. Disciples fighting him, the people fighting him, they wanted him dead, they wanted him to do something that he wasn't ready to yet to do, what the devil wanted him to do. Israel wanted him to come and, and conquer Rome, like the devil said, come and do it now. The three temptations of the devil are, Jesus, do it now, but it wasn't to be done now. Jesus Christ, God manifested in, in the flesh, and the Bible says he wept. And instead of sleeping at night, he spent his time in prayer. And you get these Pharisees, and you get these legalists, and you get these, 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 these liars, that your Christian life is supposed to be wonderful and great. They're out in a boat one time, and Jesus is sleeping. The, the waves, you know, can you imagine God there for me? Like, hey, I like these waves I made. Oh, there it is. Great. It's, oh, that, it's so, so. Jesus! What, what? What? There's a storm. Yeah, I know. But we're going to die. Didn't I tell you we're going to go to the other side? Peace, be still. Thank you for waking me up. You might say woke God up. He was asleep on a pillow on the back of the ship. Sorrows and worry. I got troubles. I got problems. That's life. That's what he promised Eve. Look what look at Genesis chapter 3. Look what God promised for disobeying God, the anger of God. Genesis 3. 316. God is angry with him. Not to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, thy conception, and in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Look at verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of the of the thou shalt not eat of the of it, curses the ground for thy sake, and sorrow. Life ain't veil of happiness. Because you disobey God. Moses, he's the pastor or whatever you want to call it, the rabbi of, of a thousand, if not a million people. How often do you think Moses smiled? Can you imagine poor Joshua? Come on, man. You know, if you're going to teach the Bible, teach it right. Can you imagine poor, poor Joshua sitting there? So, Moses, what did God say to you? I, I know you're in trouble. I could have told you, you know, not to. He said, "I'm gonna, I'm not going to the promised land." Oh, Moses, sorry. Well, I disobeyed. Well, who's gonna lead these people in? You are. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> Yo, whoa, no, whoa. That, that's a modern Bible, Moses. You think I want their headache? I mean, Joshua was with Moses' right hand man. Out of ten spies, Joshua only had one person with, let's go in the land and win it. That's not very good odds. 
I can imagine Joshua seen his, some of his family die in the wilderness. Everybody died but the children, but but Caleb and Joshua. That means if Joshua's father was alive, he died. If his mother was alive, she died. If his aunts and uncles were alive, they died. Only his niece, his nephew, and the children he had that were below a certain age. Why? Because they angered God and disobeyed God. Why did Adam and Eve get sorrow? We got sorrow today because they disobeyed God. Well, I don't think that's fair. You know, that's Adam and Eve's fault, but not. We've sinned against God. We're born in sin. We woke mama up at two o'clock in the morning. We didn't need to be changed and we weren't hungry. We just say, hey, I'm going to think of self. Why? Why? I ain't going to sleep until someone takes care of me. That's sin. That's thinking of yourself. For it is soon cut off. What? Our life. And we fly away. Fly away where? Do you realize where Moses went when he died? He went down. You know where Achan went when he went died? He went down. Moses went to Abraham's bosom and uh, uh, Achan went to hell. Unless something with Moses and Michael come and taking the body and having an argument with, with, with Lucifer or Satan about it. Fly away. That's a Christian to fly away. Absent from the body, boom, right there in, in glory. But we, that's not just Moses, that's we. For who knoweth the power of thy anger? Uh, you don't know Moses? After all you said, seen? What about Noah? What about all the Noah? Eight people in, in that ark and two and, and seven of the enemy. You think Noah saw it all? No, he didn't. You think Lucifer, now Satan, you think he's seen the anger of God? No, he hasn't. What do you say? Who knows the power of thy anger? Wait till he tells a sinner, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And their name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life, and they are cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. You wait to that anger. Because John the Baptist says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but what? The wrath of God. There it is. And not even hell yet. Though hell is... Is the absence of God and the absence of Jesus and the absence of blessing. But when God tells you finally, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, that's the power of God's wrath. Now, the power of salvation is to believe what God, for the law, do what the law told you to do, the best of the ability you can do it, achieve it. And you die and you go off to Abraham's bosom. When Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried, and before he rose again, the Old Testament saints came out of the grave. And those after, after in the church age, <clears throat> those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's the power. But the power of his anger. And according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Thy fear, God's fear. That's kind of. So teach us to number our days. God, how long are we going to live? How much more time I've got? So I can do right and I can serve you. And I've never heard anybody say, well, God's given me. But there was a king in the Bible that Isaiah said, set your house in order. You're going to die. That's it. That king turned to the wall. That guy, he wept. He repented. 
He proclaimed God. And Isaiah turned around and said, God said, you're going to get 15 more years. Maybe God will tell us. I have not ever heard any preacher. Now I've heard, and I've heard many. I have not ever heard anybody yet. And I, I could be wrong, but I have not heard of it. God said, I got six months. I got four years. I got, I got to, can't say a lifetime because what's a lifetime? Some people's lifetime was my brother. My second brother was born October 13th. I forget which year. He died that day, October 13th. That's a lifetime for him. My other brother, he was he was in his 50s, late 50s, maybe 60s. Last year, his lifetime ended. My first wife died a, a young lifetime. My second wife lived to be 50. That was her lifetime. There are people living 51, 52, 53. There are people celebrating 100 years. And we've got to say, God, okay, you may not give me a calendar, but as much as time you're here, I want to serve you. I want to do correct. Now, I don't know when it's going to be, but Lord, I want to do it. I want to do it correctly. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, that be the wisdom of God. God, I want to live longer so I can have the wisdom of making money. Big deal. And then you drop dead and you can't take it with you. I want to go and graduate with this diploma from this school. And then you die, that, that diploma does no good. You die in wisdom of God and what God wants you to do. And then you hear, well done. Return, O Lord. That's a second Advent passage. How long? And let it repent thee concerning thy service. There goes Moses telling God to repent. And Moses told God one day, he said, God, you need to repent. I'm, seriously, God, you got to control your anger. Really. And I tell you right now, God, if you want to do what you want to do, those Egyptians are going to say, God was not able to bring them in a the promise. God, you repent. God, here's the altar call. <laughs> you see Moses doing that. No, Moses said, hey, God, you know, calm down. And the Bible says, God hearkened to Moses. Don't you dare try telling God that. People who have said it, probably a good thing, you know, but, you know, the reason why Jesus said Lazarus come forth, because everybody in the graveyard would came out that day. But people have said, if, if, if Moses and God ever got angry together against Israel, that was it. I mean, there were times that Moses was angry and God had to calm him down. I guarantee Josh, when Moses came down off that mount and he cracked those Ten Commandments, I guarantee Josh would have stepped in and said, Whoa, calm down. Calm down. You know who does verse 13 now? Who's our mediator now? Jesus Christ. God gets up heavy, sees a crick. I can shut up, Satan. Jesus over there, Father, it's under the blood. He's one of ours. He's just flesh. But he's repented, as seriously repented, Father. And God just. Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Now, God never sins. God has gotten a point with his anger. I'm going to wipe them all out. That's not sin, because God don't sin. Don't a man try that. We talk about the Lord, let us number of days. How many times have we sinned against God? We've got God to a point, God's like, I was backsliding, even though I, I was living right, wrongly. I was, I was trying, you know, I was witnessing backsliding and all that. One day God said, you know what? All right, you go swimming out in that lake. I'm drowning you. That's it. You're done. If I died, I'd have no rewards. I'm going to drown you in the middle of that lake. Gardner's Lake. Father says, hey, you know, he loves us. 
bother. If we can get him right, look what he's going to do. Son, I, I, I'm angry with him. Hey, he, Father, we know what tomorrow holds. He doesn't. Let me just move that raft over a little bit so we can grab onto it. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get him a, we'll get him a, a girlfriend, and, and, and she'll get saved, and they'll get together, they'll get married, and, and she's going to put up with him, but he's going to get right, Lord. He's going to get right. All right. And thank God, God repented of, of killing me. I don't know what happened. I never wrote down that day. How much I've done more in God from that afternoon that I would have drowned. How much my life would be incomplete if I would have drowned that afternoon. The mercy and grace of God. Is what he says. Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy. There it is. Now, I'm not boast because everything I've done is in the name of God. But I think about all the men in the prison ministry that I've been in. Who have gotten saved, who've gotten out of the perverted Bible to a King James Bible, who has been brought to what they have been set forth to do in the eyes of God. And God did not show his mercy and grace to me that afternoon and would have let me die in the waters of Gardner's Lake. You would have to send somebody else to those prisoners. I don't know. If God would have, would have taken my life, how or, or if Lisa or Saul would have gotten saved. I don't know what would have happened. And I don't know with, with Tracy, it, 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 her life would have came to the point she took the pills and, and the wine cooler. And the people at the farmer's market would have been happy because it would not have been the farmer's market for six years preaching the gospel to them. But God was angry with me, ready to kill me. The Lord stepped out. Lord Jesus Christ said, listen, he's one of ours. Let me just move that raft over. Let me, let me save his soul. We've got to work patience with that man. Still working patience on me now. but And we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Isn't it? I thank God he's given me that second chance, third chance, fourth chance. I don't know how many chances. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. God makes affliction in our life to make us happy. If God gave us everything, God had a lovely, great, wonderful, happy, wonderful life. We'd be miserable, spoiled brats. And we would just be acquiring more of what we wrongfully get. In the years within, we have seen evil. <coughs> the devil helps, and God uses the devil. Job would have never repented of his sins if he didn't allow the devil to mess with him. Now, the devil thought to destroy Job. God's like, hey, that will help Job. Let thy work appear unto thy servant, and thy glory unto their children. The work of what? What he's done, the testimony. What he's worked in there. Let the beauty of thy Lord, of our God, be upon us. What's the beauty of the Lord? The world, there's no beauty that we should desire. Now, I don't know where those Old Testament saints went when they came out of the graves when Jesus died, but do you ever think that after he rose from the grave that Jesus was there for 40 days? Do you ever think that he just called them together and say, hey, come on, guys. You ever think they just had a good old-fashioned Old Testament meeting? What if you didn't study your Old Testament then? Huh? Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. How will you know who Habakkuk is? Now, I, I joke around, 
But God says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word. What if we die and we're absent from the body and present with the Lord as Christians? And what if some period in time, guys, okay, all the Christians come up. Come in this room. I don't know. Not this, what if he does this? He says, all right, everybody in this room. Lord, when we're going to have the judgment seat of Christ and get the crown. Well, you disciples haven't changed. You're still wandering to know. Just sit down, relax. Everybody here? All right, take out your pencil. We got a test. We made a test. Didn't I tell you to study? My Bible didn't say that. Ooh, you're going to be in trouble. Because I don't take modern Bible answers. What if he did give us right before the judgment seat of Christ? What if part of the judgment seat of Christ was that Bible test? I don't, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. He said study. You know, when I went to school, I got... In good times, and I got in bad times. You say, how'd you get, well, one point, when the, when the teacher or instructor in front of the class said, all right, class, come Monday, we're going to have a test. Come Wednesday, we're going to study. Go home and study what we learned. Now, if I study, I got to send my good grade. If I didn't study, if I didn't hear to the teacher, I got a terrible grade. Why would God tell, and I, this is not dark, but why would God tell us to study if there's going to be no test? And what if he tests us on things that, well, my school taught me. Well, your school was wrong. Didn't you have a Bible? Well, Lord, I believe this. Well, you believe wrong. Didn't you have a Bible? You imagine, I think one of those questions is going to be, well, what day was Jesus born? December 25th, December 25th. Feast of Tabernacles. We got those. You guys are correct. Who said December 25th? <laughs> you didn't hear my preacher say that that was Happy Birthday, Tamu. Did you not read the history of the church? Have you not studied the Bible? You didn't read Babylon 2? I can imagine that one period of time God's going to have for those Christians that don't get the rain. Hey, here we go. They don't get the rain in the new, in the in the earth. The, the millennium. Well, what are they they got to sit in, in a room somewhere in heaven reading the two Babylons. Wouldn't that be interesting? That, that's that's not doctrine, but what if God gave some Christians? This is Fox Book of Martyrs, and you thought your wonderful great life. The beauty of the Lord our God, and I don't know if I told you, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. I said all the Old Testament saints arose. And guess what they arose to? And I don't know if it happened, but did they not see Jesus, the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world that has redeemed them out of Abraham's bosom? Did not that dying thief say, today I'm going to, today I'm going to see Jesus? You know, what, you know what that beauty would have been for those Old Testament saints? We're out of Abraham's bosom. We're going to glory. What we be the beauty for the Christian? When he dies, he's absent from the body and present with the, the beauty of God, the Lord. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. <laughs> Moses, did you, did, did you read what you just said? Uh, I mean, there were some Israelites that did well. Very little. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. This is a man who had a whole congregation die, but two men. It'd be, you get one of these mega churches. Thousands of people. And the rapture happened. Out of the thousands, only two people go home. It would be interesting if the rapture happened during the service. Everybody's banging along and, and, and all in the flip. And only two go up. That's the reverse of what happened in Exodus.
for the people of Moses' time and for us. We're not saved by works, but we're to have works after salvation. It's all coming down to a day.